Um, so yeah, we're week seven. We're week seven into the quarantine, and here, Brian Quinn. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I good to see you, bud. You too, man. How you guys doing? <laughs> hey, excellent, excellent. Is uh, it is a it plastic it? straw? <laughs> yeah, good for you. Yeah. Old school. Well, you know what the thing is, guys. Um, we're all about saving the environment, stuff like that, and I fully support that. But I'm not having kids, so. If you look at the impact of not having kids on the environment, oh yeah, I, I could fucking throw straws out my window all day, and I still I'm still saving the planet. So I've I've got my credits. That's a good point. Man. <laughs> That's your carbon your, offset. Your, your offset, like, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Dennis, if you uh, if you cough like that again into the microphone, um, we're gonna have to kill we'll you. Hear you. Yeah. you know, I understand. <laughs> Do you understand it's a week seven into a quarantine of coughing's the new N word, right? Like we know this. <laughs> I think he's having a bad connection. I think, I think the N word is still the N word. <laughs> I gotta be honest. <laughs> oh. oh man. Um, is this, here's the thing. Like I was trying to say like it's week seven and I, I was just having dinner with my wife and she said to me, she turned to me. She's like, have you talked to your brother? I was like, no, have you talked to your sister? I have three sisters. Have you talked to any of them? I was like, you know what? I really haven't. We were FaceTiming them every day. Yeah. Like, in the beginning of this but have we reached the new norm where now it's like it's just back to normal like yeah, i'll yeah. talk to you know what i mean are we yeah. there is this the new norm i hope for now i think so yeah what is normal honestly the, the novelty of quarantine has worn off so now we're just doing the normal things we would do we're just doing it inside our homes so as much as you like in the beginning you used to reach out, oh we got to get together we got to talk to everybody zoom parties yeah. all of that now it's like eh it's the same. <laughs> I think it was just like in the beginning, I had to browbeat my parents because they live in a retirement village down in Florida. Oh. I had to browbeat my parents to stop going to the fucking golf course and stop going out. I'd be like, guys, you live in a community of people who are the target for this. Yeah. yeah. So I think like the daily contact was about making sure that they, <laughs> that they were behaving. <laughs> and now that, that they've taken it seriously and they're staying indoors, now I'm just like, oh, fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. I yelled at my dad too, but he just completely ignored me and then stopped answering my texts. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Oh, um, I don't know. Yeah, are you guys I, holding up? I, I, good, good, good. I guess over it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, totally over it, man. I, I have to be honest with you. Like days like yesterday was se- it was sixty five degrees and beautiful. Hmm. I really oh. had no problem. I, I loved it. My son and I were outside. My wife, the dog. You know, like there's people about. You're going for walks, bike rides, whatever it may be. Days like today. I'm ready to kill oh. myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the weather, it's a catch 22. Like the weather really needs to break in the Northeast to deal with the rest of this. But in the same sense, as it breaks, people are going to be going out and doing things. And are we going to spark back up? Is there going to be issues? Like, yeah. Uh, you know what hit me right now was the fact that someone needs to write a book about really tough choices, name something other than catch 22. Sorry. <laughs> Why? I don't get the joke. <laughs> tired of being, being called a catch twenty two. We're all five by five here. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> wow. That, uh, <laughs> thanks a lot for that. We were we were yeah. talking we were talking about um <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to make this happen again. It's not Sorry. gonna work, bro. We were, I, still, we I feel work. stupid because I, I I still don't get the joke. We, we you know how like start that, now. <laughs> that that joke where you're like um where you tell a joke that's not funny and you get everybody in on it when somebody goes to the bathroom. No right. soap radio. Like, yeah, yeah. No, no soap radio. And everybody laughs. I thought you guys were doing that to me. I was like, I don't get that. <laughs> I, none of us got it, which is makes okay. it even funnier. I, I mean, Dennis, did you get it? <laughs> One person I, I knew what he was going it, for. He didn't make it funny, but I knew what he was going for. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's up, man, with the beer company? It's going great, huh? Are you loving oh. it? Oh, yeah. It's going fucking great. <laughs> Good. Can't make any beer. The beer that I have in uh, the, beer that I, the beer that I have in storage is going bad. So what I'm doing why? is um, because the, why am I get going out of focus? You're like Whoa. one of the ghosts. Wow you 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 you, you combed your beard and you went yeah. <clears throat> completely yeah. fuzzy. All right, you're an, uh, it, you're an essential though, like right, like alcohol is an essential. 
Well, it, well, that's not it. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it takes a while because bars aren't open. Like we have to, we're still, it's an early company. Robson and Horman really opened in September. So it's like, we're at the stage where we should be growing and we were growing, but like, if I'm not out there trying to sell the beer, if I'm not going into bars, trying, trying to push it, you fall off the radar. You know what I mean? And mm. when somebody's like, all right, let's order some beer. They're, they're like, Oh, just get bud. Just get, you know what I mean? Like yeah. nobody's out in bars drinking, drinking his way down. And it's easier to get other beers than R and H right now. So why would you get R and H right now? But we're turning it into a positive. I just had a phone call today. All the beer that we have, and it's not like the beer is going bad, but beer, um, the taste changes over time and you got to have a consistency across you know, oh, this fucking goddamn. Hold on one second. <laughs> What's going on here? Hold on, I'm about to. I'm about to. I'm about to stop this nonsense. That's okay. Because I didn't. You know what you're I'm saying like, though, it's all by taste, and if it doesn't taste the same every time, you got a real problem. I right. mean, that's <clears throat> that's the problem, right? That is the the trick with brewing. Like, how does a a, a Budweiser or a Coors Light like how do they stay so consistent on such a large scale, right? Well, that's it. It's it's down to a science, right? Okay, I'm back. Sorry. See how shitty this one looks now? But what are you gonna do? You look fantastic. So, at least you could see beautiful. It. Thank you. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, so like, all right. So now the beer has been in storage so long that it's starting to change consistency. But I had a phone call today where, um, there's this company that will take the beer and turn it into hand sanitizer. Oh yeah. Uh, I've seen that. So and bottle companies are doing that. I'm just donating all the back stock we got and they're turning it into hand sanitizer. They're giving it back to me and then I'm going to give it to like, uh, you know, uh, sanitation workers, firemen, cops, and stuff like that. We're going to go around to all the depots on Staten Island and give it to them. So at least some good will come of it. But right now, it was going great, but we're on a little bit of a little pause right now, I guess, like everybody yeah. else. I mean, you, you could still distribute, can, and distribute to liquor stores or no? Yeah, no, we're still doing that. In fact, you yeah. can go online. If you live in New York State, um, you could go on uh, and order it online and get it delivered to the house. But, um, so, so we still have good beer that's getting done. I'm just, I'm just, the stuff I could already tell is not going to move because it's just the, the, the demand's not there for it right now. Yeah, I'm yeah. just donating. I figured I'd get better use out of that. You know, I, uh, this afternoon <clears throat> I went online to try to order some, but you guys don't come out to Jersey yet. Not, not so. yet. We were almost there. I did the fingerprinting and everything and, and to get your license and, uh, not there soon though, but thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. How many States are you in? Just New York? Right now, we're, we're only in New York right now. Um, like I said, like we, we launched in September. The paperwork is fucking exhaustive, man. It's not easy to get into state. And not having anybody in the state makes it harder. You know what I mean? But we're uh -huh. working. On, we're, we got it. We're getting the mail order thing down. And uh, we're looking into it. It's a, you know what the problem is? I mean, I don't know if you really want me to talk about this shit. Um, of course. But, but I made the decision to self-distribute. Um, early on because like it's like the mafia man like it, to go with a distributor yeah. you've got to sign for 10 years and you have no control over where it goes how they market it and i was just like well what that sounds like a shitty deal yeah so, it's, it's yeah but now your own record you take, you take like the yeah, yeah, go ahead. you take Sorry. like the, it's like the youtube approach really yeah. right yeah like look man I, I could push it enough in new york and like when we expand into jersey dude we were supposed to be in the Prudential Center by now. We had a, we had a deal worked out. We we're going to get in there. All this happened. Now, obviously, nothing's going on there. And the guy that I was dealing with there sent me an email this fucking morning saying he's leaving the company. Oh. And, then, and that he's going to pass it off and he hopes that they keep it up. But if this wouldn't have happened, I would have been in Prudential. You know that'll what I mean? Like, that'll come back around, though. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I hope it's so, like man. you got to rebuild a relationship again. Yeah. yeah, I have a good, you know, Mike knows I have a good relationship with the devils. They're, they're very kind to me there, but uh, <laughs> they are. It, it but it's good. Me. Overall, you know, overall, it, it was going great. And I anticipate the second we're able to get back out there and do it, it will go great again. It's good beer. I like it. Yeah. So it'll be all right. It'll all go out as much as you hustle, obviously. Yeah, you know, the more you fine. put your name out there and promote it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit big. Yeah, and that's my weak spot too. I'm not good at promoting. I I, I never like promoting, and, and that's a real weak spot on my part. I I actually think you uh, are doing a really good job at it. You know what I mean? Like I see, like I follow all the social, and and I see uh, like the radio show. Right? You have the uh, Robson oh, radio show. Yeah, yeah I started R and H beer, but that shit's fun. And like stuff like the social media and stuff like that. It, it's it's not me. It's 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 Helen. You you know Helen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, 
so she she does all that stuff and and so she's good at it because she's a fucking millennial you know <laughs> <laughs> murray's good at it and that's not a slam like he that's a that's a motherfucker that like he's good at promoting uh it's i'm not it's all it's also like <clears throat> What, back to what you were saying before about like a distribution, right? And dealing with the mafia, man. And, and it's like uh, having the power that you have um, to promote things yourself, like what James did with his book, right? Mm -hmm. Like that is, that's where it's all at. If you can cut out all the bullshit, like could you imagine if uh, at this point you can, but if you could cut out, like what kind of battles, I don't know if you want to talk about anything like this, so uh, don't if you don't want to, but like imagine all the battles that you had making your television show. With, ne with networks, right? Yeah. That if you had celebrity going into it or a following yeah. that you wouldn't have had. You have that ability with your beer. Well, it's a little bit different because like when you're making a TV show for a network, you're playing with their money. So they do have a right to, right. to say whether you like it or not. But you're right. You get to a certain point where you're like, look, if you want to invest in me to make a show for you, you have to let me do it my way. Uh, we're still not at that point. <laughs> See, we're still not. <laughs> It's That's fucking crazy. crazy. You're like 52% of that entire channel and you still, you still yeah. kind of box yeah, for creative the control. Fucking, the movie was like, it was like, um, it worked out fine in the end, but like we didn't get to make the movie we wanted to make. You know what I mean? It's you like, get, yeah. it's you like they fought on every turn kind of thing. Fought and lost yeah. on, on most of it. And I was like, I was happy with the way the movie came out, but like there were, there were parts where I was like, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't know why we're doing this. This doesn't make yeah. sense to me. But it's strange they do that with artists. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You figure you want the artists to do what they do. That's what got them the following. But yeah. And the shit I pushed back on, it's funny too, because like the shit that I was like, this fucking doesn't make any sense. I don't want to do this. And they're like, well, you're doing it. If you go online and read about the movie and the parts that the people are like, that fucking that that's lame like the people who are unkind you know the people that are like you suck da, da, da. yeah the parts that they're like that sucks are the parts i'm like i fucking i i don't i, I gotta but i but i what am i gonna do i can't say you know i can't go out there and be like doing what i'm doing right now which is <laughs> disowning it you know what i mean <laughs> we know what you're talking about we play dennis's games every week so <laughs> oh yeah there he is. <laughs> but it's you know it and is brian but, will as well <laughs> if you're not making something with your own money you just the way it is mm -hmm. it's just the way it is yeah so is the beard being done the way you do it yeah the beard's 100 percent me um it's it's i'm the um every dime being lost on the company is my dime nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah well uh, but then, so, you know, so new. when it succeeds and it's gonna yeah it'll be fine but i but what fine. i do is like but like with the beer company what i do is like and 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 if you had Kara or helen or or amanda who are the the women who really work the company like they'll tell you they'll be the first to tell you like my my style is this hire the right person and then just fucking weigh in when I got to weigh in. I, that's it. Uh, other than that, like I let them do whatever they want. As as long as as long as it's going in the right direction, I don't I don't argue with them. So, I I don't think you're probably sick about of talking about this, but I don't think I've ever actually talked to you about it. What what sparked now? Rupson and Horman was like a uh, fifty years ago. It it, it was oh it opened in uh, eighteen eighty eight on Staten oh, Island okay. and it ran to nineteen fifties when it got bought by Peels and put out of business. So how does this all come about? I would just I love Staten Island, you know me. And yeah. uh I, I'll get on these 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 history holes where I'll just start reading about Staten Island and I have like this cool little fucking notebook of like cool Staten Island. So I think that there's like a Deadwood type show in Staten Island. Like the stories are really Oh, nice. really weird like there was a witch there was a a, a a witch that lived on staten island and it got so she she got accused of murdering her sister-in-law and their baby and people really thought she was a witch and a uh, pt barnum made a wax figure of her and edgar Allan poe wrote her letters like and there's a billion stories like that about staten island and it's all weird shit and uh so i was just going through and i was like what the fuck i never heard of r and beer before I asked my dad. He was like, yeah, I, I drank it. He goes, it sucked. We, we called it rotten and horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but that was when Peels bought it. They, they just let it go to shit. Um, but the it was, witch of Staten Island. Yeah, you, you can look it up. And the house that she lived in, like she lived next door to a house. There was two houses next, like neighbors. Her sister-in-law lived next door. And her sister-in-law, 
She burnt the house down, killed the sister-in-law and the baby. Her house is still standing. And I don't know how well you guys know Staten Island, but where that house was, where the mother and baby died is a Perkins parking lot. But the house, the witch's house is still there. And if you look on old maps of Staten Island, like it says on it, which, which house, like on official maps of Staten Island. It's fucking crazy. You can put up a Perkins anywhere. It's going to do business. So. Yeah, I guess so. It's a curse. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, there's, there's like, um, murders on Staten Island and, and just crazy shit went down here. The house on that. Richmond Avenue. Yeah. Uh, Oh, you looking it up? I have. Yeah, it's his job looking it up right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true. Polly uh, Bodine. What's that? Polly Bodine. Yeah, that's her. That's her. That's her. Yeah, she's buried in a, uh, uh, Ichabod Crane from oh, Staten yeah. Island. Buried Terrytown. on Staten Island. He got famous in Terrytown. Yeah, but he's buried on Staten Island. Uh, <laughs> that's you a you long see horse the, ride. The movie Glory. You ever see the movie Glory? Yeah. yeah. All right, so Matthew Broderick? Broderick's character buried on Staten Island. Like, there's a lot of like weird. Oh, uh, Aaron Burr, the guy who shot fucking um, Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton died on Staten Island, living in a hotel on Staten Island. There's like all sorts of weird characters and shit like that. I'm not feeling so good, so I'm gonna go to Staten Island to die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm you know doing. What they say, live in Manhattan, <laughs> die on Staten Island. That's, uh, <laughs> what was uh, what that was, was Staten Island? What was Staten Island like? When before, well, like in the beginning, before the bridges, when your parents, did your parents grow up there? Yeah, my father was born here and grew up here. My mother grew up in Brooklyn. She moved here when she was like 20. How did most people get or, or, or populate Staten Island? It was a ferry. It was like a, a Brooklyn to Staten Island ferry before the bridge was built. In fact, that's what, the reason R&H went out of business originally, or well, the reason they sold the Peels is because the, the profit margin kept plummeting because they had to put their um, beer on boat to get it off the island. And that was one of the reasons they were like, we just can't afford this shit anymore. And that was in the 50s? That was, I think they sold to Peels in the late 40s, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Your mom, that, yeah, it used to be an oyster. You know, like this used to be the oyster bed of, of the East Coast, like was Staten Island. That's how Staten Island was founded and made its money. There were all these oyster beds. Um, and if you go over the outer bridge, Mike, the next time you come to Staten Island, and if you look over the side, you see those sunken ships that are always there. Um, you'll see them. There's like these old wooden yeah. vessels that are just un- barely underwater. They're giant like rectangles. Those were oyster beds. Oh, wow. 150 years old. Yeah. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of cool shit here, man. I'm telling yeah. you. In fact, you ready for another Staten Island fact? And then I'll stop talking about it. Um, <laughs> The Indian's name for Staten Island translates into Bad Woods. So the original name of Staten Island was Bad Woods, which I think is so why, but So why did they call it the Bad Woods, right? Does that, does that go back? Is there like this mystical lore or like energy of, on Staten Island that was, was like a, uh, dark? Yeah, it was like a hunting ground for them. Uh, and uh, there was like all sorts of fights. There used to be bears on Staten Island, all sorts of weird shit. And it was uh, dark wood, then Bad Woods. I don't think it was because it was evil. I think it was just... You know, Bears yeah, the hunt wasn't there. good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <clears throat> what? Who? So who like who like settled it, right? So that you you know, people come over into Ellis Island, they find their way. How do they land? How do you get to? You know, how do you end up on Staten Island? That's my question. Uh, like, how, the how island's so crowded? I'm going to move over there. Yeah, That's, well, <laughs> maybe. Well, fuck All the Italians that could swim left Brooklyn and came to Staten Island. <laughs> it was, before that, though, before that. Oh, <clears throat> like I'm way talking. way back in the day. Like, yeah. The Dutch. Like before, this, before our parents, right? Like before that. There's a 450-year-old house on Staten Island. Um, people drive past it every day not realizing it's twice as old as a country. And it was a Dutch settlement. They, they called it Staten Island. And that's where the name, the name ah. that we got came from. Um, and it was, old, it was a, the Dutch originally settled it. And then during the, of course, like everything else, like during the, um, during the Revolutionary War, Staten Islanders were actually on the British side. Um, and there's a, uh, there's a, at the top of New York lane, there's a, a housing, like a senior development called Rosen crown. And, uh, there's a plaque right there, which nobody ever fucking reads. And, uh, there was a, a, um, a, a right at the top of New York and Amboy road, there was a Rosen crown, uh, tavern that people used to have dual. They used to go to Staten Island to have duels there. And all these motherfuckers like would die right there at this spot at, at the corner of uh, 
of Highland and uh, not Highland, Newdorp and Amboy and, and at the Rose and Crown Tavern. It was like a place they went to duel and shit like that. And people just drive over it every day. Wow. And what kind of history does Jersey have? Nothing. What are you talking yeah, about? Nothing. nothing. A lot of re- you know how much of the Revolutionary War is, was wrapped around Jersey? It's, it is nuts, man. Like, like so much of the Revolutionary War was, was really like handled in Jersey. If it wasn't for Jersey, we'd all be fucked. We would. I like, Damn, I like that, though. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. You should, look up, you should look up the Revolutionary War battles that were in Jersey. They're way closer to your home than you'd think, and, and the battlefields are still there. It, it's pretty nuts. Oh, my wife was an ex-White House historian. And oh, that's man, right. I remember you told me that yeah, before. The tales that I get about history over and over and over again. I'm t- I've just got good at tuning it out already. So it's like, <laughs> I love Dennis and I both have degrees in historical studies. I live in New Jersey. <laughs> We're both like, like, ah, I got no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, history. history, man. Well, the, the movie Jaws was based on uh, Jersey. You guys that's know that, right. right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, that's a good one. A lot oh, of good Jersey boy. Tales. Amityville. <laughs> Amityville's Long Island. Oh, is it? They changed. It's actually it's actually based on code. it's Manasquan. It's the Manasquan That's... Inlet where uh, yeah. the actual shark attacks happen. Oh, all right, not Amityville. Amityville. No, Amityville's uh, the made-up place. No, Amityville. No, the house was real. Actual... What's that? The house was real, and they actually I heard I think back in the eighties they rezoned. So the Amityville Horror House is technically not in Amityville anymore. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, they the reason changed why the you address. got confused is the island was the, was Amity Island. Ah, uh, yeah. Jaws. Oh, yeah. That must have been the the. We the, hit a tangent the, there. We hit a tangent. <laughs> Let's land this plane. <laughs> I I went to go see the Amityville House. I drove. They changed the address um, legally so that people wouldn't do it. But I went to go see it anyway. It was just a house. Just a house. Just a house. Nobody, no up story, though. waving at you from the... Nah, and they changed the iconic windows aren't there anymore. Oh, well, the eye windows like, aren't there anymore? If you're going to buy the house, like, why, not, why would you not embrace... Lean into it. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, you know what collection. <laughs> Have a party. I'll say, wait, everybody listen, 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 listen. Get out. Yeah! <laughs> I'm in. That, I'd go to that nest. Eddie Murphy, <laughs> or Eddie Murphy said it best, right? Wasn't that... Uh, was it Delirious? I think it was. He's oh, we move into this beautiful house. It's a black, you know, black family. We move in and we, oh, honey, look, the kids are playing in the yard. And the sun is shining. Can't out. Too bad we can't stay. Too bad we can't stay. I heard he, uh, I heard he's making a comeback into stand up or thinking about it, which I think I would. We talked about it not too long ago on the show, but I, I would love to see it. I heard uh, an interview with him, and I don't know. I think it might have been he did uh, comedians and cars getting coffee with. Uh, with Seinfeld yeah. and he said the his bar is a barrier to entry is his comeback special he's like he can't do like five minutes at clubs to work stuff out he's like because he knows he's Eddie Murphy he's raw delirious Saturday Night Live you know all the movies all the things so his barrier to entry is he's come out shot and and it's be, it's got to be great you know or uh, if it's not then he's a failure. Bri- Brian, let me translate what Dennis the intern just said to you. He said, I have fucking DSL so. in my house. <laughs> so I sound like a piece of shit robot. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought it was mine, but I'm hardwired. No, no, I'm not even not. on Wi Fi. I'm like, Trust me, week seven into the quarantine, we know who it is. <laughs> and, <laughs> it- <laughs> and he tried to blame it on me on social media. <laughs> I did not. All week. Oh, did. that's you, funny. You, did, you son of a bitch. I'm running a speed test right now. <laughs> Eddie Murphy can never get back in because he's got too much of a body of work. If he gets canceled, it's so much money. I don't think he can get canceled. Oh, they do it to everybody, it seems, these days. <laughs> oh, who's been canceled? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, you go out there and you say the wrong thing like Kevin Hart did, you know, years back, and they come after you. I'd hate for him to go out there and just say the wrong thing. It's like Bill Cosby living too old. You know, he got too yeah. old, he lived too long, and it caught up with him. Well, and he raped women, I guess. Those yeah. Are, but well, I guess the, that's, a, that's a small part. <laughs> there was the crime. <laughs> I guess, though, but, like, you look at it, and, and I, believe me, I'm in the business where I, where I watch what I say and stuff like that all the time, but it's just, like, aside from a few notables, like, Kevin Hart, like, what did he lose? He lost the fucking, probably the worst job in Hollywood. Oh, no, absolutely. Academy Award. Jumanji Duke came out next week, made a billion dollars. That was actually kind of funny, too. 
Yeah. <laughs> the first then, one was really good. I didn't see the second one. And look what uh, uh, who ended up hosting? What's his name? Uh, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, he was. Oh, great. He does he the, the Globes. Oh, the Globes! And look what he did. He like destroyed them. Yeah, he's right? funny, like, man. That was very funny. He's a little. He's yeah. He's he's he says it. He just says it. I I I, I find them funny. I do. I always have found Gervais funny. He, uh, I know he could be like a little smug dickhead from time to time, but yeah. so could I. So. <laughs> You know. do, you, do you buy in, Brian? Do you buy into any of like the uh, QAnon and all that, all like the conspiracy theories about what what's going on, like with Hollywood and eating little children? What do you mean? What? No. <laughs> I don't. No, like, wow. What is uh, the, uh, I don't know what the, I don't know what the, the 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 conspiracy theories are because I don't pay attention. But I will say this: I have known people in Hollywood. I have worked in the entertainment business a long time, and most people are so fucking dumb. Uh, and and so afraid for their jobs. That's that's all I've ever gotten from people in Hollywood. They're either dopes, or or they're just afraid for their job. And then every once in a while, you meet someone that you're like, ah, that's a good guy or girl. Right on. Yeah, I, I've never seen any Evan. I mean, I'm sure there's all sorts. I mean, you read that book. What's that fucking book I was reading? Easy Riders and Raging, Easy Riders and Raging Bulls. Right. Let me show you that. Um, maybe, maybe he'll read one well, minute of us. Let's talk one second about that, that chapstick <laughs> moment we just had. What was that about? So, uh, I know my lips are chapped. <laughs> so, like, this is a book about, like, Hollywood back in the day. Um, it's it's uh, Easy Riders, Raging Bulls, How the Sex and Drugs Rock and Roll Generation Saved Hollywood. There's a story in here that's fucking – this is – I got in the wrong time. Like, uh, Dennis Hopper was uh, – he was oh. directing – it might have been Easy Rider. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was such a fucking pain in the ass. He wouldn't let anybody in the edit. He would get violent. He was like a real fucking madman. He was a legit madman. People were so the studio was afraid to talk to him. So they're like, "We got to give this motherfucker notes on the movie, but how do we do it?" Their solution in this book, they threw him a forty woman orgy. Oh, good. Gave him a ton of coke. Nice. And when he was in the middle of it, they showed up at the house, rang the doorbell, and said, "Hey, we just got to talk to you about a couple of things." Went over it with them. He agreed. They threw him back in the orgy, and they fuck. And, and he, now, <laughs> that's breaking is, to him gently. Yeah, like <laughs> real gentle. Uh, 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 where's my time machine? Like, like, if I'm being a dickhead, like the solution is to throw me a forty woman orgy and give me a, a, a mound of drugs. That that didn't happen on the movie. Nothing. There's a, in my experience, there's nothing like that going on at all. Nah. I mean, I live in Staten Island. I'm sure if I lived in California and Hollywood, I'd probably see that shit, but. I never get, we never get invited to that stuff. I got, I got invited to Seth McF- McFarland's um, Christmas party a few years back, and that was a big to do, but that was it. That's it. Do you, um, you used to go to the Super Bowl party all the time at, um, in Arizona. Oh, I went, I went once to Doug one Stanhope's. Time. He doesn't do it anymore? If he but, does, he doesn't invite me. So. I don't think, <laughs> that sucks. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Doug and Bingo. They're good guys. But even that, that was a, that was exactly what you wanted to be. It's everybody drinking, watching sports. There was no. I think a lot of things are are are, are wishful thinking. Yeah, know. the world has gotten tame in a bad way. It's not good. It's like somebody put the hall monitors in charge of everything, and like we all agreed oh. that we should listen to them, so we do. And the mantra became, "What did you mean by that?" <laughs> well, it's, I don't even know if it's that. I, I, I know people are sensitive, but I think it's, I, I really think it's cell phones. I think it's cameras. They were, they just ruined everything. Yeah. Just everybody's on their fucking most boring, best behavior all the time. There's nobody that's like, like a rebel now is like, I don't know, pick the lamest fucking rebel you can. And you're just like, like, what's his name? Um, who's the fucking Harry Styles, right? Everybody's oh loving him. Oh my God. Him. And he dresses like a woman on the fucking on the red carpet, and people are like, like, oh, he's. And I'm just like, Bowie was doing this shit 40 years ago. Yeah, like, yeah. how is anybody still impressed by this? Like, it makes no sense to me. Yeah. So, so what, about, what about Benjamin? I want to talk about this cat because it's all over the website. What is so special about this cat? And how does a fireman become a cat guy? Um, I think a lot of firemen. My fire, my firehouse had um, had. Uh, had we fed cats in the yard all the time, we'd always be taking them home and whatnot. Is that good uh, for PR? What? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm a cat guy. Well, I travel a lot. I love dogs. It's not like I don't love dogs. It's just I can't, I can't physically care for a dog with the, the amount of traveling that I do. 
But, I mean, cats, you're not a cat, you just don't like cats? No, no, I'm just attacking, you know, for no reason, for comedy. Oh, sense. okay, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I have three cats, and they all have, like, their own separate personalities. They're all pretty cool. Like, I, I've, I've not met a dog that could beat these cats, but I love dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the one's definitely got your heart. If I don't click that I'm over 21, it checks me out on the website yeah. and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm a little worried about that cat watching me. He's good. He's old now. He's 16. <laughs> he's fucking old. Oh, that's an old cat. his ass now all day. He's awesome. He's, he's the best, man. He's my what pal. Was, there was a cat online the other day that were showing that we lived to 38. Wow. Uh, uh, Joe in there. Uh, Umberto's cat lived to like 23 or something like that. Oh. Really? Yeah, no I, fur on it. <laughs> I would love to, I would love it, man. As long as he's okay. He's a, but it's funny cuz like people who dismiss cats are like I never get it because like I said I have three cats. They have three completely different personalities. One is stupid. And, like one you're like this <laughs> how, is look, it, you see her. She doesn't know how to <laughs> put things together. Like she's yeah. just like she looks at things and like you put her food in front of her and if you don't show her where the food is, she can't find it. Like she's that dumb. I'm just like, this is an input. <laughs> Have you yeah. checked her eyes? Yeah, you sure she's not blind? <laughs> no, she's stupid. Just this dumb cat. And it's just like, it doesn't make me love. I don't require her to be smart. I just require her to be furry and cute. Um, whereas Benjamin is so fucking smart. Like he will be like, this is crazy. This is crazy. He'll be like, he'll be like, he'll look at you and he'll be like, Meow. and I'll be like, and I know he wants something. And I'm like, what do you want? And then he'll walk five feet. He'll turn around and go, Meow. and I'll be like, okay. And then I'll follow him and he'll lead me yeah to where he wants me to go and like we've developed this weird communication between the two <laughs> of us that, that we understand each other a little bit so well, maybe i'm crazy or maybe i've just been stuck in my house alone too long i don't know oh cats are cool man <laughs> uh my wife wants tilly dead oh she does and it's not well, i she met tilly and i understand that <laughs> um she she's getting old and her her uh she definitely has like a gastro issue so she's throwing up a lot uh, she also has no teeth anymore they've yeah. all fallen out yeah. which makes me a terrible pet owner Trying but uh, get. Uh, she's defective dude <laughs> and she's made she's made everybody in my family bleed <laughs> <laughs> everybody and and q i don't know if you remember this did you a long time ago in my apartment in asbury we shot a thing like the more you know bit yeah i remember <laughs> i have the best video of so sal Ask, we, I, I poured him a glass of water, and I don't know why, but if you put a glass of water down on the table, Tilly will walk up and stick her head in it and start drinking it. Like, she just <laughs> likes fresh water, and she did it to him, and I have it on tape somewhere. I oh, need to you got to find that. That's great. But uh, she's, you know, that's how long I've had her, man. She's, she's that's 15. She's got to be 15 or 16. Uh, I uh, got Benjamin when he was eight, um, and I was a fireman at the time, uh, and uh, I got him, and the day I got him, uh, like a, well, the week that I got him, my girlfriend broke up with me, moved out. I came home, all her shit was in the car, and we had mm. just gotten this fucking cat four days earlier. And she's like, "I'm leaving you. I'm moving back to Cleveland, and I'm not taking the cat. Um, so what? you got to take care of the cat." And I'm like, "Holy shit!" So I get the cat, and I pick him up, and his teeth were so loose and bleeding. And I'm like, "What the fuck do I gotta do?" So I took him to the vet, a thousand, twelve hundred bucks in dent in dental work. I've had this cat four days. I just got dumped. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to turn down an over I had to turn down an overtime tour at the firehouse to do it, which really means it cost me like two thousand dollars like four days after I met this cat. We didn't get off on a good start, me and him. But it's great now, right, buddy? There's a bond. What, what did they do to his teeth? <laughs> I'm curious yeah. because what did they do to his teeth? Oh, they just pulled him. He's got no he's only got two He has none either, right? He's got, yeah, because the, yeah. the owner who had him before me never took him to the vet. His gums and teeth were all rotted and infected and stuff like that. So there's hope for Tilly. You mm -hmm. should get Tilly a grill. I feel, I feel <laughs> like <laughs> such a... Uh, I, feel like life. Such, <laughs> I feel like such a piece of shit because that... Like, I took her to the vet years and years ago, and, and the vet said to me, I'll never... The vet's name was Dr. Shock, and you guys met <laughs> me. You guys met me. I'm, I could be a, a little bit of a, a dickhead, right? So... Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Shock said to me, I paid $60 to rescue Tilly. I brought her to the vet. She's like, oh my God, her teeth. It's the same scenario. Her teeth are, are rotting. You know, we're going to have to like, you're going to have to pull these out or it's going to cause bigger issues along the way. And I was like, how much is that going to cost? And she's like, you know, and mind you, this was a long time ago and it, situations are different. I just started, um, 
my career. You know, I wasn't making a lot of money. She was like what Brian said, like, it's going to be, you know, a thousand dollars to do this work, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Get that. no, I'm sorry. She, she said to me, I rescued Tilly for $60. She's like, well, just the blood work is going to be $120. I said, $120. I could throw her in the lake and go get two more. <laughs> I thought <laughs> I thought it was funny, yeah. even though I love I love the cat. I didn't mean it. She <laughs> sure she looked at me. <laughs> she looked at me so deadpan, and she turned around and she walked out of the room. I've been going to that same vet hospital since then with a dog and a cat, and that woman still works there. No side eyes, you. She will ne- She won't see us. Hold on. <laughs> that <laughs> she is funny as she, hell. She won't see us. I couldn't afford that. Like, that's a lot of yeah. money. It was a lot of fucking money, dude. Yeah. yeah. And the cat's not thanking you for it. No. No. Um, I mean, I feel terrible now, all these years later, like seeing her go through that, dude. I feel terrible. And like, we are so connected at this point. You know what I mean? Like, she's been sure. my cat for, a, you know, 15 years. And it's family. It's yeah. a friend. Like, he's a friend. I, I, you don't even know what I do. Every other day, I, Every other day, I put an IV in this cat. And oh, I my goodness. It, and, I, and, I, and I do the IV drip with it uh, every other day. Oh, you're an amazing person. Yeah. They, they, I, I went to the vet. He goes to the vet every six months. I, I said to the vet, I was like, just tell me what I need to do to make him live as long as possible. And he was like, boof, 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 boof. I, I just, I run through it all. Wow. Because when he dies, I'm going to be hollowed out. You know? oh. See, though, there is, <clears throat> so there, there is like a, here we go. Catch 22 to that. Right. So we had <laughs> Joe. We had, <laughs> I still don't get it. <laughs> uh, we had Bunky, which was our, was Pam's cat. And all his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> one, one day Bunky jumped off the counter and uh, like her hip just popped through. Uh, and we were like, wow, that was really weird that she, she always jumps off the counter. She was a climber, took her to the vet. They did a, an x-ray and it turned out that she had body cancer. And she was her. All of her bones were like Swiss cheese. They were like, we we should put her down. And and Pam was not ready to do that. So we we and Bunky seemed to be happy. She was still with it. So we kept her. We brought her home. She was limping around, and like it quickly progressed from there. Yeah. Um, And then we felt like when we finally did it a few weeks later, like we it was, it was too long. Mm. And, and, it, and it was like almost selfish of us to, to put Bunky through that, yeah. which, but you don't want to let go and you, and they can't talk to you, right? Like you say you have a communication with that cat, but you don't know how yeah, they're really You're doing. about to make me cry. I, I can't even yeah, think man. about it. I get so upset. I, yeah. It is. I know he's the day they tell me that that day comes. I, I hope he just dies in his sleep. And, and that's that because it, because in your situation, I would have been like, I'll take him home for a good two days. That's what we did. Yeah. Just do it. And bring him back. But I, I, I'm going to be a, a fucking wreck. Um, Hindsight being 2020, I will do a home where they come to the home and they euthanize the animal. Yeah. I mean, you know, my brother taking the, the cat Bunky's head and sticking it in the toilet and shaking was like, yeah. that was yeah. too, yeah. It's too, it's <laughs> graphic. I mean? like, that was too much. It's graphic. There he is. Hey, Benjamin. Hey, uh, Benjamin. What's going on, pal? You got the anything? Mascot of r h yeah, mascot of Impractical Jokers, a mascot of R&H. Ooh. <laughs> Good God. I just took it to a dark place, Mike. I just, that whole time you were telling that story, I was wondering if you put the cat in a bag before you would throw it in the river or you just chuck it in straight <laughs> off. Like, I was wondering no. what was going on in your mind. I kept missing it with the arrow and the fucking arrow. They don't stay lit in the air. Like, that's such bullshit. You want to give a listen, Viking Benjamin, funeral. Benjamin, don't listen. <clears throat> How you doing, pal? Uh, Benjamin, we hope you live a long time. Yeah. He looks great. Chin Don. Mm-hmm. He good. He has seizures now, which is scary. But we can do. Dude, that's right. love, man. That's love. Yeah. I know, pal. Go away. Oh, there he is. He spoke yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, All right, we're, gonna have, we're gonna have to edit that. He hosts the radio <laughs> show with me. Actually, that's so but, great. Because I do the uh, RNHB radio show, which is a real radio show in the '30s that I brought back. And I've been playing it on music. Uh, you know, I just go on. I do two hours. I play music and stuff like that. But I recorded here in my house. And uh, he sits in the room with me and he just meows the whole time. So he's now he's a radio star, too. That's he was in the movie. He was in the Joker's movie. He had a little cameo. Where was he? he when, when we're sitting at the picnic table and I call home. Uh, and I'm FaceTiming with Benjamin. And the joke is, oh, like, yeah. And I'm like, hey, buddy, what's going on? And he's going, meow. And I'm like, no, don't say that. Meow. So, 
Yeah. <laughs> I, the, the, I don't know if I've ever talked to you about this or asked you, but the confusion yeah. that you must have, that must have come across your mind when you saw me on the screen. The, when, when what? When you saw me up on the screen as Franz Gold. Oh, oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. Were, were, I, you, were you like, like, what went through your head? Well, I, I thought the joke, my first thing was like, I, I thought it was so funny that, I, that, that they picked you to be a social media influencer. And I thought the joke was, all right, I'm a middle-aged dude who's fucking up here pretending that I know anything about social media. I was like, and I, and when you came on the screen, I started laughing cause I was like, oh, fuck it's Polano. It's hysterical. I was like, buddy, you gotta, you gotta cut me a break pal. Um, I was like, but um, I was like, so he's the joke in my head was he's going to be lame and I'm going to be lame. We're going to be two middle-aged people telling these kids how to do social media. <laughs> uh -huh. but I did not see what, what was coming, which is how it kind of plays out in the beginning as well. Right? Like, yeah, I thought it was a pretty good gag that me and you were the social media experts. Right. I was like, this is so stupid. But, but then, you got, <laughs> yeah, you really went up to me. It was pretty fucking, it was pretty well done. France. So, so when it cuts in, dude, you, like, when do you, I mean, you figure it out right away. Like, when do you realize the room? You know what I mean? Like, how long until you pick it up? The door? Oh, oh, yeah. It was pretty, it was pretty, it was when my mom starts, like, talking all, like, fucking weird and shit. You had no <laughs> idea that happened? I Zero, zero fucking clue that happened. No <laughs> clue whatsoever. It blew me away. All right, so like that's a good example of a fight that I lost because there are three, as you know. He didn't want you in. There's three versions, <laughs> three porns that my parents do in the movie. Yeah. And what's comedy? The rule of three, right? right? And they're all fucking hysterical and they build and the audience is laughing so hard that you can't even hear what's going on. Yeah. And the network was like, well, we think three is too many. And I was like, you guys are fucking crazy. Get three. And, but it just wore me down. And I was like, fine, do two. In fact, in fact, they, and none of these people are at the network anymore, by the way, they they all moved on. I'm, I'm like, they, they focus tested the movie and they promised me they would do it with three. And they only focus test. They lied. They cut out the third one. They only did two. And then used the results of the focus test against me. And I was like. They rigged the game. They rigged the game against me. And I lost that fight. So there's a third really funny bit that, that we'll never see the light of day. And Not even on a, 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 the bonus features? They're on a what, what, who, who, what, where, where, where's this? I mean, these bonus features showing. But their point was like, well, it's redundant. Like, they already get it. They get it twice. And I'm just like, do you guys not understand? Like, that's, it's called the rule of fucking three. It's called the rule of three. <laughs> I mean, it was clear. Now, I'm trying to remember. I mean, it's clearly a build to the pool boy, right? And it's a very quick hit on the pool boy. That's the one they cut out. That's the one they cut out. That's the one they cut out, the pool boy, which is hysterical because he's not yeah. even near a fucking pool. <laughs> like he's, just, <laughs> he's standing there with a pool net pretending to rake a pool that doesn't exist. You clearly oh. see there's no pool and, and, and it's over in 10 seconds. But for some reason, the people in charge are like, nah, even though you want that in, we're not going to put that in. So there's like a thousand hits like that. You know what I mean? It's so great too, because like if you could be there while we're filming it, like Murray, Murray was like directing me filming that, and the deliberation on what, how we should shoot the pool thing, so off the deck, so it looks like maybe there could have been a pool off the deck. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's no pool, and he's just no. holding leaves in a skimmer. Oh, it's so. You know funny. what I mean? Like, <laughs> and you're right; it is only ten seconds, but it, but it's indicative of what I was saying before of how like you're just never in charge. Yeah. You know, you never so are. Final cut is important. Who gets that though, man? Nobody these days. Nobody gets it. But you know what? I think it's interesting because like it's now that thing now of like we're in this area where it's like, do we even need fucking networks anymore? Do we even no, need these you don't. Things? Like you don't need a distributor. Yeah. Like you don't need a, a publisher for your book. Well, the only thing is you do if you want to use their money. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah. What yes. I guess so. Yeah. I, I, I guess a beer like a beer. The risk, the financial risk behind a beer company and the financial risk about publishing a book uh, are a little bit different, right? Like, sure. What's, I mean, look, look, the beer company, like, I, I'll be able to tell within a year whether I'm going to lose the money or not. And it's like, and for fucking once, the government's working with me instead of against me. You know, they take fucking almost 50% of what you make. And at least the money that I invested in the beer company, 50% of it is a tax write-off. 
So there are the, you know what I mean? So there are benefits. So like, let's say, and these aren't the, this isn't the real number, but just for the sake of it, if I invested a million into it, which I cannot stress enough, I did not. Um, <laughs> uh, like when I, when I write that off of my taxes at the end of the year, really, I'm just writing off, you know, I'm only paying 500,000 out of my pocket. Again, I cannot stress that these are not the actual numbers. <laughs> no way in the world would I ever invest a million dollars in anything. But like, so, so that. So you get into things like that where it's like instead of just seeing them take half my paycheck, it's like, oh, okay. Like now at least they're earning yeah. they're, they're, they're part of my paycheck that they take. So it's interesting. And with the beer company, you're getting assets as well as things, an actual physical business that you can uh, bank on. No, you don't really. get any assets with You don't have property or an actual uh, no, equipment? I, nothing I, like I that? Rent, I rent a flagship brewery on Staten Island. I rent right. their tanks. We, we brew out of there. Yeah, they're a great place. Good beer too. And, we did a uh, podcast out of there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they got a great setup over there. The only thing I had to do if I wanted to self distribute is I had to buy a a, a box truck, which I bought. So, so there's one asset, one asset, and a forty <laughs> forty thousand dollars for a fucking box truck. I was like, come on, man, this sucks. But, yeah, but you your do? moving needs are set for life now. Oh, dude, yeah. you don't even know how many people have <laughs> borrowed that truck from me already. It's so funny. I mean, now you have a production vehicle too. Yeah, right. 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 <clears throat> yeah. So, um, De- Dennis, the um. You were with you were with us when we uh, podcasted with the brewer. Yes, we were there. That's, I don't know if you realize that's where the commercials for Rubson and Horman were filmed. I uh, same know that same now. same room. Same I didn't tasting know room, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a great yeah. space, man. It's a great space. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, they really got something nice down there. And that's where we played the trivia game after we did the podcast, right? And yeah, lost to those. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, clowns. <laughs> and, and, and what um what was the I saw something with uh, Staten Island Makerspace. We that's where uh, Celis. Um, premiered this movie, right? Some guys are bigger than others. Yeah, and that has something to do with the radio show. Is that he? Well, Maker, it's a uh, Maker Park Radio is the radio station. That is that the same there. place? It's oh, in okay. there. It's in that building. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that where we shot that thing from. It doesn't look like that anymore. They got like um, all these little almost the cubicles set up with different creative businesses in them. It's actually really cool. Uh, mm-hmm. And Tom Ferry, who I went to high school with, is running uh, Maker Park Radio. And I, I was like, you know what? It just seems like fun. Like, just do it. That's awesome. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I, I was a little nervous because I was like, what if I, what if I through this, I discover that my musical selections just suck balls. They can't. It's your selection. They yeah. Can't. You know what I mean? It's yeah. what you like. Sure, but once you put that out in the world, you know, then you're you're doing it for other people. And if those people turn around and be like, "Yo," dude, I mean, they made Ishtar, they put that out. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's I like, loved Ishtar. Yeah, why? It really wasn't good. <laughs> it was so funny. Come on, uh, I'll rewatch it. I will rewatch <laughs> it. But I remember it not being good. <laughs> Today is all Macarena for two hours. Yeah, let's, like let's I get go. That. Although I did have a funny idea because I've, I don't know why I've done this lately, but I got really like into the American Pie movies again. Oh, recently. Yeah. They're yeah. so fucking funny, man. As those first two are solid, solid yeah. movies. And then the, the other, the, then the second two actually have things to recommend in them as well. And uh, so I was like, for one show, I'm just going to do the American Pie soundtrack. And I was like, people are going to fucking hate it. I was like, nobody wants to hear shitty songs from the fucking early 90s anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Well, are you are you like are you like K Billy superstarring them in the beginning like uh like you know what I mean like uh, because if you're if you're doing that and you're introing like why you're playing that sound like people right. would, I would love to hear that you know oh I, mean? I do talk a bit but it's this I, I I'm not like again it goes back to that self promotion thing where I'm not I'm not like hey everybody welcome to the R and H beer club this because yeah. I could only imagine like Sal listening to it and being like what a dickhead <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> So, yeah. so would you play like all power pop uh, punk no, stuff, I, I, like emo know, stuff? I, I played prince i played uh, uh that's good stuff know, Rolling stone I, I played solid hits that i that i know i enjoy listening to but it, in between the songs i i find it hard I, I always find it very hard to let my guard down and really be me it's funny because i watch these videos like um do you guys do this oh you know it says seven minutes remaining i would yeah. see that okay um the countdown where, is upon us there's is. this um there's this sh- where people do these car what they do is they'll go into a field and they'll find like a car that's been sitting there for like 40 years right and then they challenge themselves to get it started in place and they make these youtube videos you go like vice city garage or, or something like that and they'll be like all right this is a 1967 you know chevy and it hasn't run in 30 years and there's weeds growing in the engine and those motherfuckers get the car started every 
time. And it is so fascinating to watch. And I watch it. And I look at these guys who do it. And they're these fucking, you know, they're fucking hicks in the middle of nowhere doing it. And I'm like, they're so entertaining. I was like, and they're so good and naturally funny. And I'm like, and I say to myself, why can't I be that natural on camera? And I'm talking about some motherfucker in a field in the middle of Utah starting a car. So, yeah. you know what I mean? And meanwhile, I've been on TV for 10 years. So it's like, I, I really don't have a good view of myself and my skills and my talents because I'm just like, I wish I could be as likable as that guy. <laughs> Sad. I, I probably need therapy. What's really funny is that I watch those videos too. Mm. Do you watch the videos where the people go in like the forest and they dig out of like clay and they make like a pool in the middle of the water? I've seen that one. Oh, yeah. Dude, those are so good too. It's, it's <laughs> those guys awesome. in the Amazon that have like a bamboo yeah. stick and they make like a, a six foot deep pool with caves and it's water awesome. features. Those yeah. are awesome, but I'm but I'm telling you, those, those car videos are fucking crazy. They're yeah. crazy. Some people got some skills out there. They really yeah. do. Well, what are we doing? Sitting in front of microphones, I'm trying to make each other laugh. <laughs> it brings me up every week. I don't know how it does it, but it really makes it does, me feel right? Because you're hanging yeah. out with your yeah. friends, like yeah. really. Yeah. I mean, you, so look, you're like one of the pi- you're like one of the pioneers of it. Tell them Steve Dave has been forever, right? Like you're not yeah. you're not in a room with them right now. Like I miss these guys in this room so much like this is this is yeah. you know it's yeah. it's getting us by but do you not miss that i do i i do i miss it uh, it's you know but i mean the good thing and it's similar to like the guys we've been doing the podcast you guys been doing it for a long time now too yeah. um it's you get each other's rhythms so it's not as bad as it could be but yeah. it, there is that like oh, i'm talking over uh, let me let me stop all the time yeah. yeah, yeah, and then you get fucking DSL in the mix. Like, oh, I'm man, on guy, cable he's now. Fucking, he's got a hamster running <laughs> in a wheel, powering his, <laughs> yeah. his internet. You know what I mean? Hold on, I gotta wind up the internet. Give me a second. Let me throw this yeah. at you while this countdown is happening. Okay, we've implemented a, a, an apocalyptic uh, segment to our show. Yes, we, we used to call it the uh, the armchair futurist, where we talk about uh, uh, in the year 2050 what your industry is going to look like. So we would end up asking you what the beer industry is going to look like in 2050. And maybe we'll ask you that at the end of the next uh, segment or, or call in. But what we've been doing is the one minute monologue. Okay. When this stupid clock starts to say one minute remaining, less than one minute remaining. Okay. We've been picking up a book, whatever book is near. We, you've already glanced over at a bookcase, right? You picked up a book yeah. and we just, we just, we just want you to read. Yeah. Oh, I got a good one. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we still got three minutes and 57 seconds before that that uh, clock will start to flash at you. You want me to get the book now? No, that wouldn't be fun. You have to be under pressure. Yes. Yeah. Don't I even mean, stop looking. Cool. Stop looking at the wall. Don't even look. Don't I even mean, look over. <laughs> that's cheating. Oh, yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of books there, man. Like, what is Oh, that? my. Is that a Ghostbuster? Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a screen accurate Ghostbuster costume on a skeleton. Oh, my God. Jealous. Yeah. Jealous. It, it even says Quinn on it. No, it's personalized. Yeah, I wear that for Halloween. What do you think of the new one coming out? I can't I'm excited for it. Wait. It looks good, right? It looks I can't so wait. good. Well, my thing is like, I'm watching that time. My thing is like, people are like, oh, it's not set in New York. It fucking sucks. But to me, I'm just like, to me, we're not going to get the Ghostbusters movie we all wanted. We, it's impossible. Ramus is dead. Yeah, Ramus yeah. is gone. So if we're not going to get that and it's impossible to get that, give me something I haven't seen before and let's see if it yeah. works. I like it. Small and, town. Right, and you saw the Ecto one in a fucking rotting, like in a field, like that motherfucker who got it started. We were just talking about, like when he gets it started, he tears through that like that wheat field or whatever, and and you hear, Uh, it worked for me. I was like, this is fucking cool. Yeah, the trailer looked great. It's it's coming with the 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 real story that we all know and love, and it's and it's moving it forward. Yeah, by going backward, it's moving it forward. Right, and I like that they Egon's granddaughter. Like they clear, like they didn't make her like a sassy fucking know it all kid. She's clearly autistic, just like Egon was. She's, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like I like that. I like that they kept yeah. that. Like I like the two. The they two go to a sixteen movie. Besides being horribly written, was like I, when when they announced it, I was like, wait, they're throwing out the continuity. I was like, what? I was like, I don't even want to see that. Like, I don't even want to see that movie that pretends that the first two didn't exist. How is that interesting at all? And, and it, it was a bit of a misdirect because one of the first trailers was, was it 30 years ago, four scientists saved the world. Right. Now, who are you going to call? So I was yeah. like, I don't care that it was ladies. I thought the movie was okay. Um, yeah. But when they just threw away all of that, 
to, to that, give us this, yeah. and then they make jokes out of the four Ghostbusters that were there. Yeah, that though, that's a powerhouse cast. Like they could have pulled it off. The writing was bad. The fact that they threw out the, I mean, the, the first joke in the movie. Oh, less than a minute. Oh, <laughs> Thor was great in that though. He was so funny. All his who? lines, throughout the whole thing. That guy who plays Thor, whatever his yeah. name oh, is. All right. He was great in that. What is it? What is it? One minute monologue. Michael, Michael Palin's diaries from uh, from um, uh, Monty Python. Oh, we all know that. He, he published his diaries. So here we got Monday, February 14th, 1972. Drove to Terry's and we worked at putting a TV show together. Driving home has been quite an adventure now with the power cuts. I never know which traffic lights will be working and which won't. Street lights have generally been turned off, and when there is a blackout as well, it becomes quite eerie. Driving at rush hour around the darkened elephant and castle with hundreds of cars and as much light as a Suffolk lane is a disconcerting experience, but in a way, it seems to take some of the urgency and aggression out of driving. Am I continuing? Oh, yeah. Until it dies. Okay, Tuesday, February 15th, 1972. At 10.30, Eric arrives, and we work together rewriting three film pieces of Eric for the next six shows. Our next power cut comes... Wow, what the fuck was going on with the power in England in 1970? <laughs> and we carry on working by candlelight, working until 6 a.m. Jesus. Uh, to do our typewriter. Oh, 6 in the evening. Okay. I must confess to quite enjoying this enforced disruption of routine. It appeals also to the yearning deep in the back of one's subconscious to be controlled by the elements... How is this less than a minute? <laughs> That's a keeper, that bit. That is yeah. a <laughs> it, it's clearly uh, not an accurate minute. No, it yes. isn't. No. no. That was a great cut. Oh, so much better. Dennis isn't underneath me anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm over Brian again. There we go. You guys are still in the same position for me. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. Like It sounds like they were going through what we were going through now, back in the 70s. Yeah, what is with the power then? Why were the lights going out? Well, know. it was England, so everybody was too, you know, they didn't want to make a bother of anybody trying to get it fixed. <laughs> so the power's out again. Uh, we shan't make a big deal about it. Just keep stiff up a lip and move forward. That's all it is. Yeah, it's a good book. That was a great one-minute monologue, though. That was good. The first one wasn't so good. I don't know oh, what happened with that it. one. What do you mean, when Dennis <laughs> tried to ruin the show like he always does? Uh-huh. All right, let, oh, me try to get, let me try to get to this. Uh, it, we, we've gone a little bit long in the two, so I didn't get to it, but... Uh, can you guys hear the music? Yes. Yes. All right. So you hear that music. It's a game we like to call top or bottom. Uh, we're going to round table it. Um, two things in a relationship. Which one's on the top and uh, which one's on the bottom? Uh, Q, we'll start with you. Uh, I don't know how you are on your Zoom screens. We'll go uh, Q uh, and Buffet and Dennis. You'll go after that. Got it. All right. Uh, top, top or bottom number one? Uh, the Ecto-1 or the DeLorean? Ooh. Ooh. God, that is tough. I'm going to probably have to give it to the DeLorean. Even though in, in this room alone, I have three Ecto-1s that I'm looking right at. But I have three DeLoreans as well. Uh, I probably got to go DeLorean only because it travels through time, man. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It yeah. definitely does. That's a tough call. <laughs> did you know? <laughs> That's a tough call. Did you know that uh, oh. Back to the Future 4 is coming out? <laughs> No, I don't believe that for a second. It is. Do you know how, like, the new, <laughs> <laughs> what actually, what no actually, what actually powers the new DeLorean mm -hmm. is shaking in the, <laughs> it was, <laughs> too soon. Are okay. you making fun of Michael J. Fox? No, no. There's lots of earth. <laughs> Jeez, man. Uh, He's giving was, you so much, and you just turn on him like that? <laughs> <laughs> the guy even makes fun of it himself. He was on Curb Your Enthusiasm, and, and he was making oh, fun great. of it. I, 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 I'm, I'm clomping. I'm, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm not we, we kid because we love, right? No, I know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't get offended by anything, don't worry. Uh, okay, yeah, it's tough, though, because I, I, I love them both, but I probably got to give it, personally speaking, to the DeLorean. Buffet. It's definitely the DeLorean because there's too many seats in Ecto-1. I don't have that many friends, so <laughs> I only need the two-seaters. I'm good. <laughs> you are dude, loving like quarantine. <laughs> are you not loving quarantine, dude? Joe? I am loving quarantine. Yeah, I, mean, I hope it goes on forever. Bri, 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 what about you? You're a little bit like Maffei, like lone, you know. It's. It, I don't mind. Be, I don't. Uh, the only. The only thing that that I don't like is is the. If they told me it was over in two months, 
I'm fine. Yeah. It's 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 the open ended. It's the fact that we don't know when impractical jokers will even be able to shoot because just because they open it up doesn't mean that we're going to be able to shoot the show. So there's a lot just the uncertainty of it, um, and not leaving the house is starting to get to me a little bit. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm like. I'm the same way with you. I want an ending date, but I want an ending date because I want to know when Amazon's going to go back to two-day delivery and I can actually get groceries that I order, you know, yeah, instead of like yeah. di- different shit showing up. So Yeah, but I like my house. I have pinball machines. I'm, o- I'm okay here. Are you, are you refreshed? I'm worried a lot, man. I, I worry about the crew. I, I worry about the, the IJ crew. I worry about whether they're, they're okay financially. Um, and I worry about... Um, my brothers are lucky. They have they have they have jobs for the for the government. They're okay. Uh, I don't know. I just I just I have a feeling of anxiety just for Americans in general. So that's taking a look. It's hard. every time I start to enjoy it, I remember and I talk to the guys in my firehouse a lot, and I hear a lot of shit that's going on, and I I, I just the the pure enjoyment that I would have if I had six months off isn't here because I I, I I'm a little anxious about about everybody. Yeah. yeah, the world's better when it's over. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I just worry. I just worry about everything. I worry. I find myself worrying about things that I never worried about before, like strangers. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm getting old. Anyway, sorry, top or bottom. I'm sorry. Keep going. Dennis. I don't know. After that, <laughs> I yeah, think I know, that I Ghostbusters is a, is a perfect movie, and it's my okay. favorite movie. But it's not because of Ecto-1 that it's my perfect movie. It's just a really great part of it, so I have to give it to the DeLorean. Yeah. He, uh, Q, we were talking about before, before you jumped on in the beginning, we were talking about uh, how Eric Stoltz played Marty McFly and yeah. they, shot, they shot a shit ton of the movie. Yeah. Ha- have you seen any of that footage? I've only seen what anybody has been able to see, which is like that soundless clip of him in the mall parking lot. I've never seen the, the, um, the, the full like edited one. I, I heard they'll never show it is what I heard. Yeah, why? Because they don't want to embarrass him. Apparently he just wasn't good. He, like, yeah. he didn't nail it. He did, just wasn't nailing it. Yeah, I think that's what Zemeckis said was this, this, he just doesn't have it. Yeah. He's great, right. but he's just not what we're looking for. Right. Yeah. I mean, they shot almost all of the film, no? No, I think they shot a lot. I think they shot four weeks, and then they went back and redid it. Uh, but uh, It made Michael J. Fox's career. In the movies. <clears throat> that, was my, uh, that was my favorite part of being out in L.A. Uh, this summer, past summer, this past summer, shooting yeah. for uh, I.J.? Was mm-hmm. when we shot in front of the uh, clock. That's tower. great. I just right? fucking walked inside of it. How sick. Me and Ambergio went to the roof of the, of the, uh, the clock tower and stuff like that. It was cool. Um, we kind of hit this, but top or bottom number two, I wrote quarantined or live, live tour. Oof. Quarantine under these conditions or I mean, live tour. You know um, what I mean? You can make them any conditions you want, but basically like, I mean, if it's gotta be it, hard, right? If you're telling me that I have the money to never leave my house again over working for my money, <laughs> I'll take the staying home and then having the money. I, 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 I like doing shows. I don't like to travel. So losing touring wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to me. I love the shows. I, I, I can't stand the travel anymore. It's a lot, right? So I'm just not a, I just, I'm not capable of enjoying Things I think I find a reason <laughs> not to like them. I just don't like things. We use that like, line. Like, I get, all right, like we fl- like we get we fly we fly to the you know to, to the middle of the country, fly first class, land, go to a hotel, eat, go do the stage, get off, and go fly to another town. It sounds sometimes we get to do escape rooms. Sometimes we get to, we. It's a good experience, and yet I'm still like I don't want to get on a plane. That's what I'm saying. Like I think I could yeah. just find reasons not to like anything. But I love the show. I love doing the shows. I love being on stage. I mean, it's got to be a rush. Maffei, you want to you want to you want to answer? Well, that? it's we been all... it's been so long since they've been on a live tour. So <laughs> well, you, you kind of used to live tour now. I, I don't know if you remember. Maffei used to be a professional snowboarder. I used to love it. It was the greatest yeah. thing in the world. Handing out stickers to little kids who thought you were important when all you were doing was having a good time. Yeah, but, it seems like a scam, right? Yeah, it was, it, it was the life, and I would love to go back to it. But uh, if I could stay inside all the time and not interact a lot and have all the money I need to do all my hobbies, I'd take that every day. Well, what are your hobbies? Uh, I play a lot of video games. I mean, b- when I say I play a lot, I play them all. Like, oh, I yeah. have every console. I have every TV in the house has a computer on it. Uh, both What's my kids the- play. 
Cause what's your friend? Cause I just played Dead Space one and two. I went back and replayed oh, those. Oh, those I are two it. of the best horror best. games. And when the, when the Necromorphs come behind you and they look like they're oh. tapping on your shoulder, freaks it's you out. Fucking great, man! I, Dead yeah. Space. I, I I hope they bring that too. I didn't play Alien Isolation, but I heard yeah. it's kind of like it. Absolutely, but great horror game. That when you were getting dragged by your foot and you had to shoot that part of its leg. Oh, when that tentacle comes out and grabs you, yeah. (laughs) So good. Uh, Yeah, yeah. I mean, I play absolutely everything. I'm playing Animal Crossing now and this, a game called XCOM, and Mm -hmm. I'm I'm loving life because they're both like thousand-hour games, and I'm just totally into them. I can't stand Animal Crossing. I fucking hate it. I'm so, I'm like, wait, I'm like, wait, what, I'm just, I'm like, all I'm doing is like, pressing the a button over and over again like <laughs> yes you're doing just, it a lot there's not even a story it's just like you're just this asshole on an island and i gotta collect coconuts i was just like what am i doing like this is not <laughs> for me if i build water moats around every single character and made my own animal prison a lot of people love it that's great i used to do that with the sims i used to like take a sim and put them in a room and then remove the door and then yeah. just leave them there until they die of starvation <laughs> the fuck? For real? Dude, you can put you them in the pool and remove the ladder. It's yeah, awesome. you you'd see them go insane, like they'd starve to death, and then their ghosts would haunt would haunt yeah. the room. No shit. And sometimes when I really wanted to fuck my friends, fuck like make my friends think I'm nuts, I would make the room clown themed and then uh-huh. remove the door. And then I'd I'd say to my friends, Look, I'm killing this guy with clowns, and they'd be like, You're fucking weird, but <laughs> the best thing in the Sims is Uh-oh. when you have a party and then you remove the bathroom. Oh, and they all got to pee, and they freak out. Do <laughs> they really? Yeah. I got to play Sims, man. I've been having a really hard time uh, with the quarantine and video games. Um, Sorry. I, 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 I've talked about it. I talked about it last week, and I, I'm doing it. I do it again, man. Like, I am lost on the Xbox One. What I'm, are you playing? I'm, forget playing. They're just the interface. Of, like, <laughs> <there's so> really? Much, <laughs> dude, <there's, laughs> Old man like, Polano the, can't get it to start. so much shit. <laughs> I, I texted you the other night, like a, a, the Red Dead or... Um, oh, that's right. What was the other one? I, fa- I forget, but uh, you said Red Dead. I ended up get doing uh, Call of Duty. Oh. Uh, be- right? Because I like... It, it, well, it was free, and it was a yeah. first-person shooter, so I figured I'd try it out. And I, I, like, I started playing online, and they throw you out of an airplane, and like you skydive, you open your parachute, and then sometimes I would get shot before my parachute, before I hit the ground. I told like, you were gonna get I'm owned. like, it's so beyond me. You're yeah. playing against other people? Yeah, humans. Yeah, I can't do that anymore. No. I tried yeah. playing Fortnite. I drop in. What? And two seconds later, I'm dead. I'm You're like, dead. this wasn't even fun. And then I, I yeah. respawn. Yeah. I got and virtual reality. You like what it? system you got? Uh, I got the Vive. Oh, I have that. Vive's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I, I just downloaded the new Half Life game, but I've been, you know, Jiggy uh, and uh, Ambergio. Yeah, we've yeah, been yeah. meeting. We've been meeting online virtually and playing golf. And oh, uh, see, oh, that's cool. yeah, we're doing stuff like that. So you're playing Alex. I, I I just downloaded it today. I haven't started playing it yet. It is the best VR game that is out there. It is the first story driven VR game that's any good. Yeah, it's totally worth the play. You're gonna love it. Is Martin in it at all? Uh, I'm gonna spoil it for you. Watch. Okay. Yeah, play the game. See, see, I think I need to take your advice. I think I need to do like Red Dead, Sorry. where I can play at my own pace, and I'm not love Red Dead. getting shot by a 13 year old before the game. Yeah, Pretty I love the anything. story in Red Dead too. I thought I thought yeah. they really nailed that character Arthur and stuff like that. Do you played it all the way through, Q? Yeah, I played it all the way through. So, how did you feel when he fell off the horse? Oh, it's heartbreaking. Spoiler, man. <laughs> yeah, man, I was like, oh no! Come Spoilers, on. you're like ruining. I'm told you, I'm just he, about to. Play. He fell off a horse. Don't worry yeah, about it. Man. Not, I'm not telling you context or anything. I went into one of those huts, and the hillbillies, like, I think they raped me and killed me. I oh woke yeah, out my clothes in some like swamp. I got raped by that guy too. I hunted him down and killed him. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're not exaggerating. You get no. raped by that dude? Dude, I got raped by that dude. You get, you get raped in the uh, game if you trust the wrong guy. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We're not kidding. It's uh, crazy. Why am I playing this? I, I want to play golf. Because like, <laughs> it's played play for laughs. Personal. It's played for laughs. Don't uh, worry. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you got to get Red Dead 2, Mike. That's All what right. you got to play. I'm telling I you. Think that, I, I think that'll I be the next you wrong. That'll be the next one. <laughs> Stay away from shooters, man. You're not like 16. You're going to get washed by everybody who's playing the game. Yeah. Online. <laughs> um, D- Dennis, did you answer? Does anybody want to hear your answer? I don't even remember the question. Uh, quarantine or oh, live tour? But the, live closest, tour. the closest you've ever come to a live tour is playing in a cover band in a battle of a bands in college, right? Like, and I loved it. And, we and won. you loved it. It was one night. 
Great. Well, was, we did a couple of nights. Don't take away Love Boutique's power. <laughs> Love Boutique. Uh, um, all right, I'll, I'll go to the next one. Uh, top or bottom, number three, Rubson or Horman? Um, ooh. Ooh. Well, I'm going to say Horman, um, but I think most people would say Rubson because he was a rascal. He uh, – he he like cheated on his wife. He knocked up he knocked up his girlfriend and then made his wife adopt a child and then the girlfriend was found wandering the streets of Staten Island claiming that snakes were trying to kill her and shit like that. Like he he, he was always getting in trouble with women, Rubson. He was like a roguish type guy. But uh, he died fairly early on and, and it was really uh Horman that carried the company to where it, where it ended up. So personally, <laughs> I'd have to go with Horman because of, of what uh, the company means to me. But Rubson, I think, was is a guy you'd want to have a drink with. I love that you, you know like all the backstory and all everything. Oh, I went Dude. to their graves. I found their graves. I uh, I, uh, I left a can of beer on their uh, on the tombstones and stuff like that. No shit. Wow. They yeah. really appreciated that. Tip your yeah. first sip for your homies. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maffei. Oh, I, I want the one that did this through the whole video. <laughs> they both did that. <laughs> no, the one did it the whole time. Like, didn't stop every line. It was like this. Yeah, who played? Time. Who played? Who? Um, Brian played. Brian played. Yeah. Uh, uh, I forget. He was the one doing that. Brian. I think he played Horman. Yeah. I think he played Horman. <laughs> Joseph. Yeah. How can you not go with a guy named Horman too? You know, honestly. Oh, Horman. <laughs> well, it's H O R R. But he had a good thing. He got a. <laughs> he got accused of being a. Um, uh, during World War One, a, a German sympathizer, and uh, they they the he made the newspaper print an article proving that he wasn't one. The, the, the whole the whole story of the fucking company is crazy. They're all maniacs. He killed himself, Horman. He slit his own throat in a sanitarium. What? what? In in, yeah. New, in Manhattan, the, the building's still there. It, it's a it's a tenement now, but he he was there and uh, he slit his own throat with a razor. Oh, that's crazy. How do you even do better that? ways to go than that? You that mean, sounds like some Epstein stuff, man. Somebody got to him. Yeah. He knew something. <laughs> well, back then, nobody gave a fuck about any of that stuff. He got suicided. Yeah, he did. He did. <clears throat> um, la- last one, top or bottom, uh, number four, Back to the Future or Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? Uh, uh, I mean, it's not that. Look, I love Bill and Ted's. Uh, and I would I would say it's one of the rare things where the sequel is as good, if not better. Um, and I, and I, I'll go to my grave, but Back to the Future is one of the best movies ever made. It just is. It just is, in my opinion. Interesting. So I'm going to say Back to the Future. But it's a Sophie's Choice, man. You know? There, are you, That's uh, better than Catch-22 by far. A Sophie's yeah. Choice. I like that. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited a- for the new one. When is, is that in, well that's not obviously it's not in production now but it's happening it's done it was shot already oh it's done yeah oh i didn't know it, that it was it was done shooting last when was comic con last year oh wow when cuz our buddy out? one of our friends are in it and uh, she was telling us about it bill and ted face to music right yeah bill and ted face to music yeah wow yeah. new bill and ted that's it oh, you didn't know that no no oh the the the, the plot's pretty cool it, it's the they um they they're 50 and they never wrote the song that saved the world oh. like they were supposed to. And, um, or Wild Swans. What's up? Wild, wild Stallions. Wild Stallions. Stallions <laughs> wild Stallions is no more. That's and twice the, tonight I got things wrong on that movie. <laughs> their, uh, their, they, their daughters uh, and them start traveling through time to figure out how to, how to learn. Because I think it's something they have like five days before that date hits mm. that they got to do it yeah. by. So it's about that. It takes place after the battle. They win the battle of the bands, but they, they don't want change it. the world. Yeah, but they never changed. They never wrote the song that changed the world. Yeah, yeah. What was the name of the hot mother-in-law? Missy. 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 Yeah, yeah. Missy. Yeah. Missy. Yeah. Missy. How I excited! That she divorced your mom, your dad, <laughs> and married mine. <laughs> How excited is the other guy that Keanu Reeves agrees to do this movie? Alex, Alex Winter. The Winter. Yeah. He's got a good career, man. He directs. He? he directs. Uh, he's like a huge commercial director. He does script doctoring. I'm sure he's gonna love being back. I mean, when you saw that Walmart commercial, and and <laughs> and the, the the phone booth comes down, and and just Alex Winter walks out, you're like, all right. Obviously, <laughs> Keanu yeah. was like, I'm not doing that shit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited, man, because those those guys, fucking the guys who wrote those movies, they they're really funny, man. They they're gonna be. I think it's gonna be great. 
Station. I hope Station comes back. They got Death oh, coming Death. back. William Sadler's yeah. coming back. And, Death's um, going to be in it. Death is in it. And do you guys see that show, Barry, on HBO? Yeah. Yeah. So the bald guy on that, he's in it. And the rumor is he's playing either Death's son or they go back in time and he's a young Death. Oh, oh, that's, that's going to cool. be Yeah, good. so it's a lot to be excited it. for, man. Like, that second movie so fucking good. Like, it the is. balls on them to be like, here's a movie about two time-traveling idiots, and let's make the sequel about them dying and going to hell. Like, there's just no through line. There's nothing. Yeah. It was it's amazing. It's like, it's like Gremlins 2. You're like, what the fuck are you guys doing? This is insane. It's it was great. originally called Bill and Ted Go to Hell, but they couldn't get it past networks because they wanted, they couldn't advertise it outside of like during the family hour. Yeah, I still think one of the greatest lines in that movie is when they're in heaven, and he's like, "Guys, we're in heaven, and we've already mugged three people because <laughs> they're wearing their clothes." <laughs> that, that fucking lo- that that as if they could fool God with the they fucking- could fool God with fake clothes. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. It's such a great. Those movies are so good. They hold up perfectly. <laughs> I know they 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 they. they, they uh, I know everybody was like, "Well, they they say they call each other fags in the movie a couple of times." I think. Yeah. I don't think they'll be doing that in the new one. Not no. in this one, no. Yeah. What happens? <clears throat> so this one's in the in the can, right? It's coming out. But what yeah. happens? When that runs out, right? Like, uh, so, like, uh, Joker's or, or Misery Index, like, these they're, next year, we're gonna have no new content. Nah, I don't see. There'll be that a happening. delay. There'll be a delay. Yeah, yeah. I think they'll just. I, I think there's things in the pipeline. I look. The Joker's movie sat on the shelf for almost two years. You know what I mean? I, I yeah. Think, they'll just. They'll get it out. They're still making. They already started reshooting some. Like, uh, Matrix Four is shooting right now. Yeah. Really, it's shooting. Yeah. It's shooting, yeah. They somebody somebody just took a picture of him as Neo for the first time, uh, in a sh- in a street scene they were shooting. That just where, happened. Where's that? Ha- we, where's that filming? San Francisco, which is fucking weird. Really? Yeah. Do we? Does anybody know how? Like the uh, like the <laughs> movies going on? Am I am I breaking up? No, no I'm I'm that. Just, I'm that. You you made me laugh. Like Matrix Four shooting in San Francisco. Like is is, is Neo like fighting? Is he homeless? Fighting, <laughs> the uh, like what's going on? Like I don't know. I don't know. I, that I haven't heard anything about. Because uh, he died at the did he didn't he die at the end of the third one? Yes. Well, he joins the uh, and he joins Car- with the right. Master computer. But Carrie Ann Moss did die. Definitely, she did. And she's back. Oh, but it's a fucking magic. computer simulation, so yeah. it could be anybody. They didn't get Agent Smith though. Isn't that fucking crazy? They couldn't get that guy back? He wanted too much money. Same reason he didn't do uh, the uh, Marvel movie. He wanted too oh. much money. To be oh. Red Skull? Yeah. Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving. How do you know that? Yeah, honestly. I got a fucking... Ears I don't know there. sports. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, interesting stuff. I wonder how these movies are doing now that they've been released like on Amazon. Oh, like your tro- movie was. Or... Oh, you fucking see that troll movie, that troll world tour made $100 million in rental. Really? Yeah. So it looks like there's money in this. So maybe, you know, in the future, wondering about what it's going to be like to go to the movies. Yeah. You know, I don't even know. Are theaters going to be relevant anymore? If yeah, studios can make money releasing it right to Amazon. Well, they also probably keep more of the money if they release it directly that way. Because right now the split with theaters is 50%. Yeah. Huh? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I I'd prefer if they released a home. All the home setups now are great. You have a big TV and great sound. Yeah, Why do I need to go it. stay over oh, a sticky floor and potential yeah. lice? But there is something to go to a movie theater, you know. There is something like oh, yeah. I like it. I did. I did hear see people throwing around like drive-ins will come back. Which That'd be cool. Kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. You know what I mean? Your sound yeah. system in your car is amazing. That sounds good to me. Right, yeah. Just tune into the AM radio and yep. just sit I there mean, and get a hand job. All your I, I was just going to say, all these things come back. <laughs> hand job. There it is. Hand <laughs> jobs are making a big comeback in 2021. Comeback. I didn't know they went Blow away. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's a hand job when you do it to yourself, buddy. It's, uh, <laughs> no, you go uh, backwards and you use the left. How do you still, I, how do you still work on the, my hand? Uh, how do you still work the Xbox controller? Uh, I have been looking into handicap controllers for about three years now because I've been trying to figure out a way to play a game and eat a sandwich at the same time. You know what I'm saying when I say eat a sandwich. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, there was, uh, on the VR the other day, we were talking about what we should do next. And I was looking around Steam and like there's a virtual strip club and, and like, yeah. I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. No. Like, it'd be fun. I mean, not as like a, we wouldn't be perving yeah. in it, but we'd like meet and go for fun. But I was like, I, 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 I don't want to do that. No, it's, it's not there yet either. Oh <laughs> my God, man. It's, it is the new normal. I, I play poker once a week online with my, with my poker buddies. Oh, like wait. are we? You can legally. Oh, so you're just playing with your buddies. You're not legally gambling. No, we're we're gambling. Like you have to Venmo the mo- you're buying. How the fuck we- do I get in on this? I want to do that. I'll, I'll, I- I'll ta- I'll, we play Sunday night. I'll shoot you a text. We got nine. Yeah, chips. I'd love to do that. Twenty five dollar buy in, and we play thousand trips, and we just lines go up every. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to do it. Twenty five is not too bad. The only problem I have with poker is you're taking your friend's money, but twenty five bucks ain't too bad. No, it's not bad. It's fun. You you know, it's a couple hours. That you know you you don't think about it anymore. Yeah. Oh, I and should say my friends are taking my money. I never win. <laughs> I never win either, and they, and I run the whole thing, so it's a pain in the ass to distribute. But there's a button on the app where you can voice talk shit. What's you know you can voice chat on it. So as you're playing, which is a cool feature, you don't see each other, but you can yeah. talk shit, which is kind of fun. Uh, that's cool, man. You know what I mean? You're making I'm it in. work. But it's like, the, like I was saying, it's like kind of the new norm. Dri- drive-ins, movie theaters closing, playing online, doing podcasts on Zoom. Like, I don't like how comfortable it's becoming. Oh, uh, I don't think yeah. it's. I don't think it's. You think it's the norm, or it's just what we got to do right now? I don't think it's going to be normal. Do you think when the dust settles that we find that it was a little bit overreacting? Yes. I don't know. Hundred percent. Yeah, too. Hundred percent. I mean, I guess that depends on your personal perspective. If like, if because of this, your parents didn't get sick and die, you would say no, that we didn't overreact. And there's no way to know that. You well, know? I mean, when you, when you put it that way. <laughs> Isn't <laughs> no, that the way that you're supposed to be putting it? I think so. Uh, See, I'm a mathematician. No, right. So I look at statistics and I look at numbers and I look at how it went down. And I'm looking at the overestimation of death and how much the resources is. And people are going to be committing suicide and depression and alcoholism and all this crap that we did to all these people just because a certain percentage of the population died. And then I think about Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan, and the needs <laughs> of the many outweighing the needs of the few. But I don't know where I am on this. So. Right. Or the one. <laughs> so. what, what, what did we learn from Star Trek that that wasn't the case? Yeah, well, it, they uh, fucking Fox. went. They how far did they go to bring Spock back? Seriously, you know? I don't know. Well, I mean, it is. It's it, it's one of those things where you're like, it's Kirk. Well, sure, people are gonna die, and you're like, well, that's acceptable until it's just like, well, hold on, you're one of those people that might that are gonna die. Then you're like, whoa, 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 everybody, lock it down. Everybody, stay inside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? So it's just a matter of like just trying to be empathetic, but you're right. I, there's no fucking answer that I know of. Yeah. Mike you know? got me the, the one week when he's like, imagine being in the hospital dying alone and nobody can come visit you. Yeah. Then I started really feeling it. I'm like, wow, that's some serious stuff. Well, I got that from, from Michael Yo, who was yeah. like, he posted it all. He had Corona. He's a comedian. Right. And he, he had it. And he was like, he, when he got better from it, he posted up though that commentary. And yeah. he was just like talking to the camera on social media. And it was like the most hard hitting thing I'd ever heard anybody say. Like it's just watching the place. He's like, I watched people around me dying alone or on FaceTime. Like that's yeah. fucking crazy. Cause nobody could come into the hospital. Yeah. yeah. That's no but, way to go. Man, it's no way to go, but it's an ending. <laughs> on the same token, we had we had Corona Tommy. <laughs> it is an ending. We had Corona Tommy on the show last week, who's a, a, a friend of mine who had it. His whole family had it. Yeah, and he said it was hard, but like you know, he got they got through it. You know what I mean? He never went to the hospital. There's no way to know. I mean, I, I don't know. There's just no way to fucking know. That's the thing. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's like everything else, man. It's it's when it happens to other people, it's easy to have a a, a one attitude about it. I don't know. I, I think, think we'll that's be, the right I, perspective. What are you going to do? It, this shit happens. It's going to go away, and in five years, we're all going to be fucking like, remember when, how that sucked? Let's go see a yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> <Hand> much. <job. laughs> uh, Dennis, does your, does your game suck? Or is it uh, worth I don't playing? think so. Is it worth it? Let, let, let's, let's ask Brian if he even it's wants about to about beer. It, if he even wants to bother. Dennis prepares a little bit of a game. Oh, look, there's a minute left. Okay. Oh, is it coming no, up? I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I don't want to play it if it's terrible because most of the time your games suck. I'm not going to lie. I know. Wow. I say we go for it. Okay. Of course you do. <laughs> Brian, do you mind? No, let's do it. This is, 
Let's give Joe a little time to get his scoreboard up. Oh, all right. I'll get it going on. Because <laughs> if we don't, somebody doesn't win, it's not worth it. I don't play unless there's score. That's right. All right, fire so it off. This is just beer trivia. I'm going to oh, give you five right. questions okay. about beer, and uh, you're going to give me your answers. Okay. Are we ready? I'm ready. Scoreboard's ready to go. I'm there. Question one. What is the science of brewing beer called? Is it zoology, zymergy, zoomology, or zoophagy? What is the science of brewing beer called? I mean, I, I feel like in my, uh, my day, I know, I've talked to a lot of brewers. I, I've been around. I've never heard any of those. Yeah, this doesn't sound familiar to me. Zoology. Are you playing Zymergy. conspiracy conspiracy or No, no, this is an actual question. Zoomology <laughs> or zoophagy? I, I don't I'm know. Zymergy. Uh, I'm going with the first one you said. I'm going Zymergy. With yeah. You going with zoology or whatever you said? What was the last one? The last one was zoophagy. I'm going with that one. I, I'll go with the first one, whatever that was. Zoology, it is zymergy. Zymergy is actually the chemistry of fermentation, which is the right. basis That's one for of me. beer making. Q, you see what I'm saying about how he can he could take like a, a fun thing like a game yeah. and turn it into terrible? And just turn well, it it's just like you know, it's, there's no skill involved. We all just guessed. Mm. But that's all right. He's got four more questions. But it's what how well is you the guess. oldest brewery in the world? Oh, wow. That's interesting. Is it the FX Matt Brewery, mm. the Hudolf Schuling Brewery, the Weihenstaufen Brewery, or the Jacob Leinenkugel Brewery. Oh, Leinenkugel's not that old. You're saying Yamafe? I don't know. It's got to be one of the last three. It isn't the first one. Uh, but Leinenkugel was- sounds good. I've it? had. We've all had Leinenkugel, no? Yeah. What was the third one? Yeah. The third one was the Weihenstaufen Brewery. That one. Yeah, it sounds really German. I'm going to go with that. Uh, yeah, I like the German, too. Good. I'm glad you all picked the same thing so I can stay ahead. Dickhead. All right. It is the <laughs> Weihenstaufen Brewery. It opened in 1040 in Munich, mm-hmm. Germany. Oh, Steve so we got it. that right? Yeah, we no, did. We got it right. We're still losing, but yeah. All right. <laughs> Where is the oldest brewery in North America? Is it in Montreal, Milwaukee, Vancouver, or New York City? Hmm. Milwaukee. That, my gut as well says Milwaukee, but uh, Five, in the interest six, of seven, trying, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the interest interest of trying to win, I'm going to listen to what Maffei says and then I'm going to pick opposite. All right, All right so give me give me the first two again. You're going to pick the opposite of one of these cities. You got it. Where is the <laughs> oldest brewery in North America? <clears throat> Montreal, <laughs> mm-hmm. Milwaukee, mm-hmm. Vancouver, or New York New York City? So Joe's going to pick. I'm going to pick New York City. All right. See, I think it's Milwaukee. I agree with Brian, but I'm going to say Vancouver. It is Montreal. Oh, no. Dennis Molson gets a point. Brewery. Dennis gets a point. Look at that. The Still John Molson my... Brewery opened in 1786. <laughs> oh, wow. I went the wrong way with it. I feel like if it was in New York, I would have known that at least. All right. How many is that question? I have two more, right? What is game. The, I know. What is the <laughs> oldest brewery in the United States? You just asked that question. No, I said, what is the North in America. America in North America? What is the oldest brewery in the United States? Seriously, is this question third? Anheuser Busch, the DG no. Yung, Yingling Brewery, Sam Adams, or Rolling Rock? Yingling. Yingling. Come on, Mike. Yingling, Sam Adams, Rolling Rock, or what? Anheuser Busch. Uh, Anheuser Busch. I mean, Anheuser Busch isn't that. Anheuser Busch. It is the Yingling Brewery. God damn it! That one I actually knew. Pots you said it with PA. such confidence too. It's on the label. Yeah, in 1829, and the brewery is still owned mm. by the originating family. Washed. I, I'm out. I'm out. But, but Q's still got a got, chance to tie you. I got Uh-oh. one more here. I'm going with the same answer he's going with. <laughs> no, you gotta, no you, don't be a dick. You, he's the guest. You got to answer first. You got to go first. Yeah. All, right, all right. Gamer can't play games. How many cases <laughs> of beer are contained in one keg? Oh, the case is oh. defined as 24 12 ounce cans of beer. Mm-hmm. A standard U.S. keg. Is it 5.88, 4.88, 6.88, 
or 7.88? Mm. I'll go with five. 5.88. 5. 5.88. 5. Seven. Seven. Comes down to Q. Uh, no, what was it? It was five. 5.88, 4.88, 6.88, or 7.88? 6.88. The standard keg of beer is 15.5 gallons. It is 6.88 cases. We tie. Boom. You got a lightning one round? more if you want to break the tie. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I mean, tying in this game is like getting a well, I want to be able to sit tonight. <laughs> Sandwich. What city in the United <laughs> States has the most breweries? Is it New York, Chicago, now? Philadelphia, or Milwaukee? Mm. I mean, it's, well, I'm, I'm out, so I'm not even going to. I think Joe has to answer first. That's messed up, man. What are you saying that one for? I know. Mm. Well, maybe if you're nicer to me in the games. <laughs> well, the games didn't suck. <laughs> uh, I'll go with New York. Why not? New York. Why not New York? It's got the most population. I'll shoot yeah, there. Yeah, density. That's what I was going to say. What were the other choices? Milwaukee, Philadelphia. Milwaukee, Philadelphia, or Chicago? It's probably Philly, though. Yeah, I don't think it's Milwaukee. Fuck, Chicago's so big. I'll go with Chicago. It's Philadelphia. Oh, oh wow. Do you have another one? The f- Do I have another one? Let me see. You no, I guess don't. a number between one and ten? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, I do. The very first international trademark was given to a beer company. Mm. Which beer maker was this awarded to? Was it Budweiser, Pabst Blue Ribbon, Heineken, or Bass Ale? Heineken. Heineken. Whoop! I know it's Bass Ale. Mike? Oh, you're out. I'm out. I'm out. It's Bass Ale. Wow. The red triangle oh. logo that everyone recognizes that. today was trademarked back in 1777. There you go. That I know. That's on their label, too. I always look oh, to get these things. Wow. You, look at the, you really look at the labels. <laughs> I drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for playing. I had a great time. I hope you did, too. I did. Uh, <laughs> thank you uh thank you so much for taking the time during this quarantine oh man to, uh, come on the show man i appreciate thanks, it thanks but i'm gonna go i'm re-watching lost i'm gonna go kill off a few episodes oh did you it get past season up. three hey, uh, i'm on i only have five episodes left in the whole series really yeah, you see season three yeah. uh I like, all the way to the end I, i've seen the whole thing yeah, yeah. I, I think I, the ending's good i don't know what people say well, no, I don't want to. Yeah, the thing about the ending is, like, they, they 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 waste your like all the flash sideways stuff. Ultimately, meant nothing. It, yeah, it like got to the end, and you're just like, what? I, I just wasted half the season on nonsense. Yeah. Well, it was a nerfy ending, but it was how they sewed it up. So I didn't mind. I, I didn't mind the island stuff, and I don't mind the ending ending. But yeah. but the flash sideways stuff in the end is so pointless. I'm like, it, it did nothing. But I love the show, and I liked it. I liked. The season that they were back in time working for the Dharma Initiative. I thought that was pretty well done. But you can't beat those first three seasons. They're yeah. unbelievable. Did it did it correct me if I'm wrong, I don't remember. It was Purgatory? The play yeah. sideways. Yeah. Yes. Lame. Spoilers, everybody. It was so <laughs> you're not so allowed to see, you're good. Have to say spoilers. It was so good in the beginning, man. When that show is good, it's one of the best shows ever. But it was yeah. phenomenal. Then what JJ Abrams left after three, right? And then well, you know, what, you know what I noticed is like some of those seasons are 26 fucking episodes long and you're like, it's too, too many, right? It's yeah. too much. You're like, that's why you're dealing with Nikki and Paolo. You're like, they're just filling fucking episodes with bullshit. Yeah. I'm like, I don't There's care about it. a couple episodes where they're just sitting on the beach looking at the water and you're like, move somewhere. Yeah. Like, and I know? like, and, and then they really like, like well, there's one season where Sawyer's in like, he, he says like, he does nothing of value. And then, and then it's, it's really weird, but I, I do love the show. I do. What are you going to do? But thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate <laughs> oh, it. Oh, we're running out of time. Yeah, I see dude. that countdown. Uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, buddy. Thank you. Thank All you right, so guys. much. Thank Bye. You. Bye. I won. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>